Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Damage Jim's Gun Info. Today I'm going to do a brief review on the Remington 700 uh, 308 rifle. What you have in front of you is a Remington 700 308 tactical. It's got a 20 inch barrel and what I've done is I removed the standard stock that comes on it and placed it in this free float Magpul Hunter stock. Uh, it's black. They come in different colors, and it allows you just in a couple minutes of your time to swap out your Remington action or other different types of firearms, AICS style firearms, and place them in um, this hunter stock. Now, the good thing about this stock is that it has a length of pull adjustment where you can actually put spacers in here uh, to move or shorten or lengthen the. Uh, shoulder stock that fits against your your shoulder. It's got a nice rubber uh, shock absorbing pad here and it has a comb height adjuster that you can adjust how high the comb is so that you can get an appropriate cheap weld to your firearm depending upon what scoop you're, uh, scope you're using and uh, how your body dynamics and everything are because some people are longer some uh, eye relief, some people are shorter eye relief, some people are uh, larger cheekbones, some people are taller, some people are shorter, and all that stuff comes into play whenever you're trying to customize your firearm to suit you uh, so you can get the most accuracy out of it that you can. Um, what I've done is I've put an oversized bolt latch on here so it makes it a lot easier to grab. It has no problem clearing the scope but it gives you something more significant to hold on to than the small ball that is on there. Uh, this has got a Bushnell 3x9x40 uh, Rainguard HD scope with a uh, target turrets and a mill dot reticle. I've added a uh, angle cosine indicator and a level bubble that will show me what my angle that I'm shooting at is in parallel to the ground or uh, in relation to the ground as far as am I shooting level, am I shooting upwards, am I shooting downwards. Uh, because that changes the performance of your rounds and how your scope uh, performs as well. Um, the Hunter uh, Hunter stock it comes with the AICS um, grip chassis system compatibility, which means that you can use the Accuracy International chassis system AICS magazines. Now, there are two different styles of actions on here. This is the short action set up for um, 308, 6.5 Creedmoor, uh, 6 millimeter uh, GT, and 243 Winchester. There's a long action that allows you to shoot a firearm calibers such as uh, 300 Winchester, uh, 257 Weatherby, uh, 240, uh, or excuse me, 264 Winchester, 270 Weatherby, uh, seven millimeter Remington and other calibers and stuff like that and the difference is the length of the cartridge and whether or not they're belted or not uh, Some of those cartridges on the long action are considered belted magnums So those are for reaching out and hitting something at a long distance or large animals like bear uh, elk stuff like that So anyway back to this one here the good thing about the change out of the stock to the um, hunter stock is like I said it allows you to use the AICS uh, magazines so that um, you can use change the magazines out and stuff like that uh, the ACS standard uh, detachable magazine pattern was made primarily for military uh, format sniper rifles uh, and became very very popular because of how quickly that you can end up changing um, the magazine and everything out Normally, whenever you were going to end up loading your your rifle, it would only have a five round or four round magazine capacity because it had an internal magazine that you would take the rounds and you would click load them each in one at a time into the internal box magazine. And to uh, eject the rounds, you'd have to do the action for each individual one to pull it out or put the little lever on the bottom, which would cause the magazine to pop out of the bottom. and then it would dump the rounds onto the table. Then you have to clip that back into place and then load whatever new rounds you're gonna end up loading. So the cool thing about this one is, is that I can take this magazine with uh, 308, 
um, a light bullet because I'm shooting something relatively close by and I can just take and it locks right into place. And uh, I want to shoot something at a long, longer distance. I'm shooting uh, at a match. I want to shoot a heavier bullet at longer distances so that I can have more energy downrange. Well, then just while your hand is here, you can push the button and the magazine just free falls right out with the magazine release. Okay, then I can take the other magazine and throw the magazine in there. Bam, and I can go right into action. Like that one gets empty push, and that one falls out. And I can grab the 10 rounders. These are five rounders. Get the 10 rounder. Locks right in. Maybe throw your action into place. And there you go. So if you want to end up, uh, eject the mat magazine, push the button, and the magazine falls out. And the magazine rocks into place, locks into place. Bam, ready to go. Okay, you want to eject that magazine again, just push the lever, and the magazine falls out. So you can change calibers as you were uh, bullet weight profiles just by pushing the magazine release, the magazine falls out, you throw another magazine in or heavier bullets, lighter bullets. Um, 308 black tip, for example, is an armor piercing round that was designed for the military. Uh, you can actually use that to get deeper penetration in things um, if you're shooting larger game animals, as an example. Uh, or if you're just really bored and you want to end up seeing what that round will actually do to a block of plastic or whatever you're going to, to do. But they have the metal magazines, they have the polymer magazines, um, Magpul makes a great uh, set of magazines. Um, these are great because as you see right here, they've got the little notches so that you can actually, um, if you wanted, you can fill those in with 0 .308 uh, or you can fill in the little dots with whatever the bullet weight is so that you know at a glance you pick it up and go, okay, these are 147 grains, okay, or 150 grain or whatever. Um, and the reason that's important is when it comes to bolt action rifles, some rifles like heavier bullets because of the twist rate and the caliber of the firearm uh, and the manufacturer of the bullet. Some like lighter projectiles, uh, again, because of the power load, the barrel, uh, the barrel twist rate, uh, the bullet weight, etc. So a lot of things come into play and to wring the most accuracy out of your bolt action rifle that you can possibly get out, you want to um, take it out and shoot various levels of bullet weights through your firearm and actually see how they print and how they pattern to find out what your gun likes. Um, so some guns, like I said, like heavier bullets, some guns like lighter bullets. I had a, I think it was a Remington 710, uh, it was in 30 odd six, and I was shooting to save my shoulders from light 30 odd six rounds, and it was all over the, the target. And I went and switched out to the heavier 30 odd six rounds, and the pattern went from like this big, where it looked like I was shooting at it with a shotgun, to a nice tight pattern at 100 yards. So come to find out, my gun in 30 out 6 liked the heavy bullets. Uh, my shoulder didn't knock it so much, but again, um, you find out what your gun likes uh, and what makes it more accurate. Uh, additionally on here, so like I said, you have the oversized charging handle, uh, the throw handle for that. You have your safety right here, so just push forward with your thumb and it would disengage the safety pull it back to re-engage the safety. Some firearms will have them back here. Uh, I like it right there because you're already right here and you just flip the safety if you have to. It just makes it real easy to use. Uh, it's a very comfortable gun to shoot. Uh, as you can see on the scope, it has what are called target turrets, which means that some of the older scopes, you would end up taking the caps off and you'd make your adjustments with your screwdriver. And then once that was done, you screw the caps and everything back on. Uh, and you have to make all the rest of your stuff either off of the mill dots inside the reticle or you'd end up having your guesstimations and stuff like that of what it is you're shooting. With the target turrets, it makes it great because all the numbers are exterior so you can make the adjustments on the scope while you're mounted on the firearm. Once you get, for example, this rifle zeroed at 100 yards, I'm going to shoot targets at 100 yards or 200 yards or 300 yards. 308 is a powerful cartridge, so you can realistically zero it 300 yards if you want to end up doing that. Um, but for the sake of argument, we'll say you're going to zero it at 100 yards. So I know this weapon is zeroed at 100 yards with X bullet weight from X manufacturer with the dope that is currently on the rifle. 
what I can then do is I can, with an Allen wrench, take this and this, loosen these up and reset these turrets back to zero. Okay, it won't affect the, the dope on the rifle or the windage and elevation on the rifle. You're taking the, the tension off of the, the chassis, the, the, the turrets so that you can zero it back down so that it's zero on uh, the windage and zero on the elevation at no wind at 100 yards. I'm going to put three rounds inside of a clover leaf at 100 yards with X bullet weight with X manufacturer. So the good thing about that means now that you are at zero, then whenever your dope uh, changes are going to be made, whatever you add or move backwards off, you're going to raise or lower your elevation, uh, move left, move right your windage, you can actually then make the annotations in your dope book so that you're as accurate as you possibly can. Plus it also makes it great. So once you get all that done, when you shoot at various distances, you get a small little um, tab and you can actually put the information at, you know, uh, plus two W for windage, uh, right, um, up three for elevation at 200 yards if you were zeroed at uh, 100 yards as an example. That way at a glance, you can tape that or Velcro that to the side of your rifles so that when you're out at the range, you can actually just quick at a glance, you can see that, oh, I want to hit something at 200 yards. Wind isn't too bad today, so I'll make minor adjustments from there. But I want to be able to hit the paper at 200 yards. I can just glance on the side of my rifle, and I can just click, 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 uh, add that on there from zero, knowing it's zeroed, uh, zero turret, zero uh, for windage, zero turret for elevation, that at 100 yards is hitting dead on, dead center of the, of the target. Then I can just add my windage and elevation for those appropriate distances and the bullet weights that I'm going to be shooting. It sounds very complicated, but it's not as complicated as it may sound. And again, whenever you're using your dope book, you want to end up putting all your information in your call your shots, where your shots are, uh, different things along those lines. Make sure you're adding windage, uh, how uh, much wind uh, value are you having out there? Is it a full value, half value, quarter value winds? Meaning, is it coming at you? Is it coming at you at an angle from like 10 to, to 4? Is it coming at you from 9 to 3 or vice versa? So those different values are going to affect how the wind is going to perform on the bullet. So those are the different things to take into account. Also, the angle at which you're shooting. So as you can see over here, is the angle indicator. And as you can see, is that it will show you what angle that your firearm is shooting at and it shows you also the little bubble as far as whether your gun is shooting level or not. You got your lens cover over here. Probably get to the pop-up ones here shortly. I just haven't gotten to the store to get those. Uh, but also there's the ubiquitous Harris bipod. These are one of the better, most sought after bipods out there. They're less expensive ones. They're more expensive ones, but Harris makes a good, reliable bipod. But the good thing about this is that when it stows, it stows forward up out of the way. You need to grab it, just pull it down, there you go. If you want to extend it, just pull, and it extends and locks. Same thing with the one over here. Bam, so now you can actually shoot from a more elevated position or from a seated position from a wall, as an example. Uh, if you want that to go back down, all you do is push that button right there. And put the one on the other side and it retracts and there you go again this is a great uh, rifle they're very accurate odds are these weapons are more accurate than the person behind the trigger can be so uh, if you get a chance to go out and shoot you want to shoot something that's going to be fun to shoot at distance where you're going to be able to uh, be as accurate as you possibly can. Invest in a bolt action rifle. That way you can uh, have some fun down at the ranges. I have friends who like to do things like at 100 yards, hang golf balls from fishing twine and shoot golf balls at 100 yards uh, to see who can hit the most hanging golf balls. Other people like to shoot uh, bowling pins or other different types of targets. Some people even use the Tannerite, which explodes whenever you hit it. But uh, again, the whole point ends up being trying to uh, improve your accuracy with these. And with the AICS chassis, 
magazine system that allows you to change out magazines really quickly uh, and have extra ammunition readily available if you need it. So again, this is a real brief overview of the Remington 700. Uh, this is the 308 Tactical. Uh, they have heavier barrels, they have longer barrels, they have shorter barrels. Um, it just depends on what works for you. I just like this system because um, it's really accurate. So if you get a chance, get out there and do some shooting. Please hit that subscribe button below. And thanks for watching this episode of Damage Gem's Gun Info.